Right, in this video we continue section 5.1 and we try to do a Riemann sum problem, a Riemann sum, and we make our way over and finally do the infinity rectangles case. Okay, so what we're seeing here, the problem we've been looking at is the function f of x is 2x plus 1 on the interval 0 to 4, and if we tried n is equal to 8 rectangles, we had decided that delta x was going to be equal to 4 divided by 8, which is equal to a half. So we have these right rectangles drawn at 1 half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, and then 4. And when we draw these rectangles, okay, there's going to be 8 of them. And notice that because they are the right rectangles, Okay. These rectangles stick out above the function because this function is increasing and the right rectangles stick out too big. right? And so what we're interested in is adding up each of these eight rectangles and figuring out what the area of those rectangles is going to be. Okay. In terms of sigma notation, we have taken the sigma we have known that we can add up from one to eight rectangles. The function evaluated at zero plus i multiplied by four divided by eight. And then if we multiply by four over eight, this is going to be, this first part is the height of the rectangles. So when we evaluated our right endpoints, we're always getting a height, okay? Oh, sorry, let me back that up. Right rectangles, we need to stop here, stop at the right, and stop at the right. And you keep going on it like that until you get to the last right rectangle, which is the function evaluated at 4. So notice that here, when i gets equal to 8, we have the function evaluated at 0 plus 8 is equal to i, 4 divided by 8, and that leads us to the function evaluated at 0 plus 4, which is the function evaluated at 4. And that checks out as it's supposed to be. Okay, So there is the sigma notation for 8 rectangles. And we plug that same sigma notation into Desmos. And we get that that is equal to number adds up to 22 area for those rectangles. Okay, So a little bit of notation here little bit of notation that says that when we're adding up these rectangles, okay, and these rectangles notice that because of the area that is sticking out above, the area of these rectangles is too big. So what we're getting here is adding up these rectangles leads to an overestimate of the area. Okay, it's an overestimate with n is equal to 8 rectangles. Okay, and the notation that the book gives to that is capital S for sum, sum up the rectangles, sum of the eight rectangles. And S sub eight is a shorthand notation for I going from one to eight of the function evaluated at zero plus I times four over eight times four over eight. So there's our, some notation for an overestimate, capital S sub eight. Okay. Now the question is, what happens as we try to go to higher and higher rectangles? Maybe n is equal to 40 rectangles, or n is equal to 400 rectangles, or n is even equal to 4,000 rectangles, and on. And maybe even what happens as we try to take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. That is the question we'd like to finish in this particular video. Okay, so the trick here is to write down in sigma notation, right, we would do the sigma notation i going from 1 up to, instead of specifying a specific value for the number of rectangles, let's let it be n for any number of rectangles. And then we're going to find the function evaluated at 0 plus i. And instead of splitting the interval 4 up into 8 rectangles, we're going to split it up into n rectangles. And then instead of the width of the rectangles being 4 over 8, the rectangles will be 
up to n, 4 divided by n. And then what we need to do is figure out, this is called S, the overestimate with n rectangles. If we could just find a formula for this step 0 would be to find a formula for S sub n. And then step 1 would then be to take the limit as that number of rectangles function S sub n goes to infinity. And then we could figure out what this number is equal to. Okay, so that's what we'd like to do now. Let's take, um, let's go ahead and go to the next page. We'll add a page below. Okay, we will consider this sigma notation. Okay, i going from 1 to n of the function at 0 plus 4 divided by n multiplied by 4 over n and this is what we call capital S sub n and we just want to evaluate this okay and what that evaluation means is that because the function f of x that we were finding the area under was 2x plus 1 we know that the function at 0 plus 4 over n is the same thing as the function evaluated at 4 over n but that means that wherever you see x, you need to substitute in 4 over n. Okay, So this will lead us to 8 over n plus 1. So the function for s sub n is equal to adding up, adding up from 1 to n, the function 8 over n plus 1 multiplied by 4 over n. Okay. And what we can see here by doing a little bit of algebra, right? adding up i going from 1 to n of 8 times 4 is 32 over n squared plus 4 divided by n. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was looking at, I missed an i here. So this is 4i over n, and this is 8i over n. And this is a 4i over n. This is an i. Sorry, I missed my i's. This is an 8i over n. This will be a 32i over n. Okay? And now we need to add up these numbers. Uh, do this sigma notation. But what's interesting here is that this it's i that is changing. So that means that 32, the 4, and the n are constants. And we can add in any order that we want. So we can split this sigma notation up into two summations. We can add the numbers... 4 over n, and then the 32i over n. We can do this in two separate problems. Okay, And this is, uh, this is an important step to show here, some of the details of right here, because watch what happens. This notation here means that when i is equal to 1, we're going to get 32 divided by n squared plus 4 divided by n. That's what happens when i is equal to 1 and then you add, and then you go to i is equal to 2. When i is equal to 2, you'll get 32 times 2 over n squared plus 4 divided by n. And then you keep going. When i goes to 3, you'll get 32 times 3 over n squared plus 4 divided by n. And so what we can see here is that because we're adding 4 over n and 4 over n and 4 over n, we can add those and just put them all together in terms of this. We can just add up those numbers separately. And then we can take the 32 over n squared, the 32 times 2 over n squared, 32 times 3 over n squared, and we can put those numbers together into this summation right there. So we can split this problem up by addition and just add in different orders. Okay, And now we get to the next stage of the game that because 32 over n squared and 4 over n, because those are constants, it's only the i that is changing. 32 over n squared, 
comes out in front of the sigma notation, it's common to all of these terms here, so we can factor it out. That is what's happening right here. When you bring the 32 over n squared out in front of the summation sigma notation, that means that you have factored it out and you've left the i behind. And then the 4 over n was common to all of them, so it got factored out. And then that leaves behind a 1. Okay. And now we can see our little key formulas coming in here. The summation from i going to 1 of i, we know is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And the summation from i going from 1 to n of 1 is equal to n. So now we have that capital S sub n, an overestimate with n rectangles, is going to be 32 over n squared n squared plus n divided by 2 plus 4 divided by n squared. Oh, I'm sorry, 4 plus 4. Okay. Uh, 4 over n times n is just 4. Okay. And let me write this down before I go to the next page. 32 over n squared, n squared plus n over n plus 4. Okay. And if we continue this process, okay, we can see now a formula for a capital S sub n is equal to 32 over n squared, n squared plus n over n plus 4, which is another way of saying um, 32 multiplied by n squared plus n over n squared times n is n cubed plus the 4. We can see here that there is a chance for us to split this into a common denominator problem. So now you have n squared over n cubed plus n over n cubed plus 4. Let me go back real quick. So then you will have, sorry, let me take a look. Hopefully I didn't. I factored out the, okay, so that's good. 32 over n squared. We'll go back to that next page. And n times n plus 1, this should be over 2. This should be a, yeah, n times n plus 1 over 2. And this should be a uh, n squared over, this should be a, uh, sorry, this should be a 2n squared. Okay, this should be a 2n squared, and this should be a 2n squared. Okay. And what we are seeing then is that this simplifies to 32 times 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2n plus 4. So here is our formula for capital S sub n. So for example, um, if you had S sub, um, S sub 2 rectangles, the area of adding up two rectangles would be 32 plus 1 half plus one-fourth plus four, otherwise known as 32. That is the same thing as three-fourths, one-half plus one-fourth plus four. So that would be 32 divided by four is equal to eight. And then you would get eight times three is 24 plus four is 28. So here, what we've done is we've done all the rectangles at once. Okay, so we have a formula now that will tell us the formula for n number of rectangles. Okay, so if we had S8, for example, you would get 32 times 1 half plus 1 16th plus 4. And that would tell you that S8, the overestimate with 8 rectangles, would that be 32 times 1 half plus 1 16th? What is that? 8 16ths 
plus 1 16th is 9 16 plus 4. Okay, and we could come over here to Desmos and do 32 times 9 divided by 16. Whoops, 32 times 9. Okay, and then add on the 4, and that's where the 22 came from. Okay, so now we can see what happens that as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, we need to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of capital S sub n. And as n goes to infinity, we can see that this term gets closer and closer to 0, and we get closer to 32 over 2 plus 4, which is otherwise known as 16 plus 4, which is equal to 20. Okay, so here is a notation that we need to talk about now. We have this notation for the, the right Riemann sum. The right Riemann sum of a function f on the interval i going from a to b. Okay, so that would be the summation i going from 1 to n. The function evaluated at a plus i being multiplied by delta x, that's the height of the rectangle multiplied by delta x, and delta x is equal to b minus a divided by a certain number of rectangles, this same number of rectangles. And if, if the function was an increasing function, then those right rectangles would mean that the rectangles would be too big and the area would be an overestimate. So this sigma notation is what we're calling capital S sub n. Okay, And then if you want to find the exact area under the curve, you would take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of capital S sub n, and you would get a number that would give you the area under this function f of x, so long as the function is increasing and positive, okay, the area under the function on the interval i going from a to b, okay. And the notation that we have is that as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of this capital S sub n, it's the area under the function on the interval i going from a to b. There's a very important notation that we have that that limit is what we can also write as the definite integral from a to b of the function f of x dx. So this weird symbol looking here is kind of like an s, but it's, but it's elongated up and down to kind of look like an s, but, but longer. So this is the s and it's meant to be a sum with infinity rectangles. Okay, so this, when you see this notation, there is a limit definition of it. This notation is the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the n number of rectangles added together via a Riemann sum. And that is what we're seeing in this slide right here. If our function is, you know, something that kind of goes up and then comes down here, right, we can see here that we are trying to do the rectangle problem. We are trying to add up rectangles, okay, and we have I uh, interval A on one end and a B interval on the other, so I, the interval that we're finding the area under is from A to B and we have a function f of x, right? And that function uh, can be, you can try to add up rectangles, okay? And this quantity here is a right Riemann sum, right Riemann sum, okay? And when you take a limit of an infinite number of rectangles, so delta x becomes b minus a over n, and as this number n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right, we have that this notation is what's called 
the definite integral of the function f of x on the interval i going from a to b. And we can see as the number of rectangles gets bigger and bigger and goes to infinity, we can see that these rectangles do a pretty good job. Here's a large number of rectangles, but there's still some overshoot, right? And maybe even some undershoot on this side. But as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, we will get the exact area under the curve, which is what the definite integral is.